In this module, we will visually demonstrate the effective use of local exhaust ventilation during three different scenarios using a variety of hot work processes. To demonstrate this, we will use a technique called video exposure monitoring. Video exposure monitoring allows us to observe a worker's exposure in real time. The welders in this module are wearing a backpack that contains an instrument which measures total dust or welding fume every second. This instrument is connected to a computer that shows total welding fume concentrations in the welder's breathing zone outside of the helmet. The exposures are represented by the red bar on the left which lets us see the welder's fume exposures as he or she works. Keep in mind that the red exposure bar is measuring total welding fume, not chrome 6. Video exposure monitoring is a good way to watch as exposures change in different situations such as with and without LEV. To help you visualize how the welding process, the workspace, and the use of LEV together influence your exposure, we are going to observe three scenarios. In scenario one, the welder is stick welding outdoors with and without a hooch and with and without LEV. In scenario two, the welders will be flux core arc welding and MIG welding in an indoor open space or shop with and without LEV. In scenario three, the worker will be stick welding and carbon arc cutting in a confined space with and without LEV. Let's start with outdoor stick welding. Using the Chrome 6 exposure assessment tool, we know that stick welding is a smoky process that generates a lot of Chrome 6. Even if you're doing it outdoors with plenty of natural ventilation, you may still be overexposed. Shane here is stick welding on 10 gauge 304 stainless. Notice how the red bar showing the exposure changes as the wind blows. We think of wind as ventilation, but wind is natural ventilation that we can't control. Sometimes the gentle cross breezes can in fact increase your exposure to welding fumes. The high exposures seen here are due to the breeze pushing the welding fumes into Shane's breathing zone, or as Leroy says, We had a situation where we had a, a uh, we had to cut a stainless stack down, and the wind was blowing out of the north. Well, on the north side, we were in good shape. On the south side, we were totally involved in the fumes coming off of that stack, and that was 304 stainless. So you have to watch your conditions, watch your wind conditions. Let's add some LEV to this outdoor scenario. Shane's exposure immediately decreases when LEV is introduced. Shane is using a Lincoln Mobiflex 100NF with a rectangular 11 inch long hood. Shane has positioned the hood of the LEV within one and a half hood diameters of the weld or approximately 16 inches. Keeping the hood of your LEV a distance of one and a half hood diameters from the weld is what's recommended to maintain a capture velocity of 100 feet per minute at the arc. This capture velocity will protect the welder without disrupting the shielding gas. Sometimes outdoor work involves setting up a hooch or tent to protect the weld and welder from wind and rain. Unfortunately, a hooch can significantly reduce the natural ventilation, effectively turning your outdoor workspace into a space with restricted airflow. Stick welding in this situation definitely poses a risk for Chrome 6 overexposure. Inside the hooch with Shane, initially we see that his fume exposure is reduced because the walls of the hooch are blocking the gentle cross breeze that was blowing the fumes into Shane's breathing zone. Over time, however, with little natural ventilation and no LEV, the welding fumes will build up inside the hooch and Shane will be overexposed to Chrome 6. Better add some LEV before that happens. With the LEV system added, Shane's exposure stays very low. You can hardly see the red bar. Notice the resourceful way Shane suspended the LEV hose from the hooch frame using available material like welding rods. You may not always be able to get it exactly right, but remember, you're aiming to place the LEV one and a half hood diameters from the arc. Dale, a longtime welding instructor, talks about the importance of using LEV when outside. So if you're outside, even working inside a hooch or a containment that we use out in the rain, you still need to think about ventilation out there. In our second scenario, we'll move inside to a large open welding shop where Mike is flux core arc welding and Justin is MIG welding. Checking the exposure assessment tool, we know that Mike is likely to be exposed to a lot of welding fumes and high chrome 6 concentrations. Let's see what controls he'll need. Without LEV in place, even in an open space, 
Mike has a high welding fume exposure. Cross drafts in the shop explain some of the variation we see in Mike's exposure. Mike is now using LEV, but he's not using it very effectively. Notice how far away the LEV is positioned from the weld, the source of all those fumes. The ideal distance is about one and a half hood diameters from the weld. Here it is probably at three hood diameters away, and look how high his exposure is. These exposures may be lower than without LEV, but there is definitely room for improvement. The LEV is too far from the source and is not being used to its full capacity. Let's try moving the LEV closer to one and a half hood diameters away. The AQE2000 has a circular inlet with a 13 inch diameter, so the correct position is about 19 inches away. At this position, the ventilation is more effective and fume concentrations quickly stabilize to very low levels. There's no longer smoke in Mike's face. He may even be laying down a better weld since now he can see the bead more clearly. One and a half hood diameters is the best distance to effectively get rid of fumes while not interfering with the shielding gas. In this next scene, we have placed the LEV hood high above Mike's head. From this position, the LEV pulls the smoke right through Mike's breathing zone, which is exactly what we're trying to avoid. Notice how his exposure has spiked. Effective LEV will capture the welding fume at its source before it reaches the welder's breathing zone, so position really makes a difference. This position of the LEV just doesn't work. In our second open space shop example, Justin MIG welds on stainless without using any LEV. MIG welding in an open space without LEV may be okay, but it depends on the natural and general ventilation of the space. According to the hazard assessment tool, LEV is recommended when MIG welding in a shop. If Justin were MIG welding in an area with restricted airflow or in a confined space, LEV would definitely be required. Let's see what Justin's exposure looks like with LEV. When we introduce a Lincoln Electric Mobiflex LEV hood to the side, his exposure to total welding fume is easily reduced to almost nothing. Welders who have used LEV know it can reduce exposures. In this last scenario, Cliff will be stick welding and then carbon arc cutting in a confined space. Anytime you're performing hot work in a confined space, regulations require that you use ventilation. You are likely to need a respirator too. Cliff is wearing a respirator while performing these operations. A permit is required prior to working in a confined space and the air must be tested to see if there's enough oxygen. According to marine chemist Don Sly, this is, meets the definition of a confined space. And because it's a confined space, it has to be tested by reliable instrumentation so that we get the certified results to convince ourselves that this has fresh air and support of the craftsmen that enter it. Stick welding is a very smoky process that releases a lot of metal fumes. And because it requires less equipment, it's one of the most portable processes. So it's often used to weld in confined spaces. Cliff is stick welding in a confined space at a shipyard. His fume exposures are very high, which is what we would expect inside of a space with little airflow. According to the exposure assessment tool, Cliff should have LEV and a respirator. With the LEV in place, look at the dramatic change in Cliff's exposure. Total welding fume has dropped to less than one milligram per cubic meter in a matter of seconds. This Seattle shipyard uses Americ VAF 3000 blowers with 6 inch flexible ducting for LEV. The maximum airflow of this LEV unit is about 2000 cubic feet per minute. Keep in mind that the more bends and kinks in the hose, the less effective the LEV becomes. Repositioning of the duct opening may also be required as the welder moves. Now, Cliff is carbon arc cutting in the same space, which still keeps him in the red zone. Carbon arc cutting typically has the highest fume generation rate of all hot work processes, but the fumes are often directed away from the welder's breathing zone. Cliff's exposure doesn't seem as high as they were during stick welding, but if he were to continue cutting without ventilation in this space, the fumes would eventually build up and result in very high exposures. It may be difficult to use LEV during carbon arc cutting because the sparks can catch the ductwork on fire. Cliff is using the same LEV unit but with the ductwork away from the sparks. These three scenarios are examples of how LEV, if used properly, 
can reduce your exposure to Chrome 6 regardless of the welding process you use or the work conditions. Gary reminds us how easy it is. With ventilation, there's just an on switch and pull the hood where you need it. Thank you.